Hi everyone, today we're going to be having a look at a really cool lick by the late great Gary Moore. I've taken this lick from uh, his cover of Long Grey Mare, originally a Peter Green Fleetwood Mac song, and you can find this on the album Blues for Greeny, which is um, kind of Gary Moore's tribute to Peter Green. This is a blues turnaround lick in the key of A, mainly using the A minor pentatonic scale, but also and some additional notes from the major pentatonic, so it kind of gives a bit of a mixolydian flavour. I've got tabs available for free over on my Patreon page, which I've just set up, and you can find a link in the description below for that. I've also created a backing track for you to jam along to and practice the lick with. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and have a look at this lick. Okay, so this lick is predominantly out of the A minor pentatonic scale, position one, that's here at fret five. Hopefully you're all familiar with that one. Uh, but it also uses additional notes from the major pentatonic, um, which you may be less familiar with. And it's really the blend of those two scales that kind of gives this its real bluesy flavour and allows us to target notes from the chord progression as well. It's really a mixolydian type sound, but don't worry about the theory. I'm going to go through some of that towards the end of the video, so if you're interested in that, stick around. But let's just jump straight in with the lick itself. So I'm going to start at the seventh fret of the G string with a full tone bend, and then the fifth fret of the B, and the fifth fret of the E string. It's a kind of classic blues lead in. Um, and this is going to start on the and of three in bar eight of the 12 bar blues. So one and two and three and four and. Then we're going to go to the eighth fret of the B string and we do a little quarter tone bend and then hit fret five of the high E string. And that little quarter tone bend there is a real classic blues kind of sound. We want to try and make sure that the note doesn't um, actually come back down again. So when we bend it, we don't want to hear that, we want to stop the note as it's still ascending. It's basically leading our ear to that A note. We're never quite getting it as far as the, as the ninth fret there with the bend. So. so all together so far. Uh, and then we're going to play fret 7 on the high E string, followed by a trill from 5 to 7 and back again with a hammer on and a pull off. And that's the first time we kind of get one of those major pentatonic notes. Uh, the note B there, that's actually the ninth interval of A. So, all together so far. And you can see what I did there at the end. I just put the eighth fret and the fifth fret again. So the same as we did before, the eighth fret with a little bend. And the fifth fret on the high E. So once more. And then we're going to come to the seventh fret of the B string and we're going to do a bend up to the 8th fret of the B string. That's another one of our major pentatonic notes there. Um, what we want to do here is stop the bend again at the top to release it to then play the 7th fret normally. The way I do this is to put the pick back on the string at the top of the bend. So pick, put the pick on, release the bend, and then pick the note straight. And then we've got another trill from five to seven on the B string with a hammer on and then a pull off back to the fifth fret. So, so all together so far. Then we're just gonna walk down the minor pentatonic scale from the seventh fret of the G to the fifth fret of the G and then to the seventh fret of the D, which is our A note. And then we come and do a double stop on the seventh fret of the B and the G strings. And then a double stop at the fifth fret of the B and G strings. And then seven, five, seven on the D. So. So, all together so far, just to recap. Then we're going to come to this kind of the last part of, of the lick, 
uh, and we're going to be playing the sixth fret of the G string, and this is again for one of those major pentatonic notes. We're going to slide into that note. We're not really having a specific starting point for that slide. Just going to slide into it, gradually applying pressure as we slide up. You want to start from probably a couple of frets back, but only hearing the sixth fret. And then we're going to jump to the fifth fret of the first string, the E string, followed by the eighth fret of the B string. So and that's quite a quick jump there. Then we're going to do fifth fret B string to the seventh fret uh, of the G string with the same timing. And then we're going to play five and five on the B to the G and then seven and seven on the D and the A. We're actually going to do a roll from the B to the G string there. It's important that we keep these two notes separate. We don't want them to bleed into each other. So we're going to start with a slightly flatter position with that finger than normal. And then with the kind of roll of the wrist and hand, you roll the finger onto its tip. And then we're going to do uh, the seventh fret of the D string. And I tend to play those with two separate fingers, the third and the second, but you could of course roll that as well with the third finger. So, uh, for that last part again. And that is essentially the entire lick. So from the start, I'll do it nice and slowly with the counting. One and two and three. And a little bit more up to speed. One and two and three. So for those of you that are still with me, we're going to just break it down and have a little look at some of the theory behind this, why he's playing the notes he's playing. Um, essentially, we're at a blues in A, 12-bar blues, and so the last four bars is going to be E7, D7, A7, and then finally E7 at the end. So for the first part of the phrase, which is actually in bar 8, we're, we're actually playing over the A7 chord there still and it's basically bending up to the fifth, which is the E of A7, then playing the E again, and then the A note on top, which is the root. And so the next phrase... Okay, now this is really cool because it really leads our ear into that E7 chord. The little bend from eight to nine, even though we never really get to nine, is kind of that classic blue sound. It's the minor to the major third sound. So we're trying to, we're sort of implying to the ear that we're playing the major third of our E7, but we're never actually playing it. And then we're landing on the B, which is the fifth of the chord. So hopefully you can hear how that really, really outlines that chord change there. Now we get this next section where we do the little bend there and on the seventh fret. Now that is really going to be outlining the change to the D7. It's essentially all the notes of that chord. Major third, flat seven, fifth. So I'm just going to play up to that point, see if you can hear those chords underneath what I'm doing. So you should be hearing three, four, two, three. And then we've got this, this double stop section, which is kind of leading us back to the A7 chord again. Uh, and then we're hitting the C sharp, which is the major third, of course, of that A7, to the flat seven of the A7. Great sound. And then this last little run takes 
is back to our E7 chord. So that's going. Okay, so all together, let's see if we can hear the chords now underneath what we're doing. So. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's a great little lick and I hope you can take some of these ideas uh, and not only play them with the backing track for the tune, but also take them elsewhere and use them in your blues playing and your blues improvising. Uh, if you enjoyed the lesson, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be doing plenty more of these lessons in the future. So uh, hopefully see you then. Cheers. Mm -hmm.